Welcome to AATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, we are going to discuss a case about one 19-year-old girl who came to our ER with complaints of generalized tiredness associated with vomiting. Shall we begin, sir? Yes. Sir, uh, on arrival, the patient was conscious and oriented and uh, coming to the primary survey, air was patent and there was no secretions noted. In the breathing, but the respiratory rate was 22 per minute and uh, saturation was 99% percent maintained room air. In the circulation, uh, BP was 120 or 80 mmHg with pulse rate of 80 per minute and all peripheral pulses were palpable. In disability wise, GCS was full score with pupil 2.5 mm bilaterally equally reacting. In the exposure, temperature was afibrine and the GRBS was 516 mg per deciliter. Yes. Uh, uh, Coming to the adjuncts to the primary survey, uh, GRBS of uh, 518 and we took a VBG and the uh, VBG was showing a pH of 7.21 with PCO2 of 32 and bicarb of 12.6. Mm -hmm. Acidosis. acidosis. Metabolic, Metabolic acid. acidosis. So, uh, the history is that uh, she was a non case uh, PCO2 of uh, 32.4. Mm. So, is it compensated or partially compensated? Partially compensated. Partially compensated. So, um, in the secondary survey, she is uh, a known case of type 1 diabetes on insulin pump. Uh, pump. So, uh, she was having the insulin pump, uh, which was uh, the date of uh, rescheduling the pump was uh, prior two days before the incident happened. So, she failed to uh, re reconstitute the whole thing. Okay. So, after it, she developed generalized tiredness, fatigue and vomiting followed by uh, the vomiting sir so it one looks day like a, pump failure of pump failure. insulin pump that's why she developed uh, this ketoacidosis uh, sir uh, and uh, followed by uh, she was taken to a hospital for further management and and we uh, sent the routine lab investigations which showed serum ketone of 2 plus with the urine ketone also, also showing uh, 3 plus sir mm -hmm. and uh, here a grbs of 518 and other than that, uh, her lab investigations, uh, CRP was of 32 and uh, uh, LFTs were within normal. Phosphorus was 5 hmm. and HBNC was 11.7. Hmm. She was, uh, history is that she was having the uh, pump uh, in situ for the past 10 years. She was been on the pump for the past 10 years and he was been uh, regularly uh, changing the pump correctly but uh, he was having some she was having some uh, functions in the house uh, so she was okay. having difficulty so we started uh, right now uh, uh, at that point itself we started with the uh, iv fluids uh, like 15 to 20 ml per kg uh, within one hour uh, more than one liter of fluid was uh, given to her and uh, oh, in which condition uh, type 1 or type 2 dk is common dk is more common in type 1 type 1 what is a uh, why it is like that? Why it is more common uh, type 1 diabetes? Uh, so DK, uh, DK situation where um, there is a lack of uh, Absolute abs deficiency of insulin, insulin leads to DK. DK. Whereas HHS? HHS uh, partial, partial deficiency. deficiency. You can get uh, both uh, DKs, can get in type 2 also. But when you compare with type 1 and type 2, it is very common in type 1. Type. But we are not seeing that much because the number of cases of Type 1 is less, yes. that's all, that's all. But we get most of the cases uh, with uh, DK is in type, type two. 2. But if you see the incidence in type 1 and type 2, DK is more common in type 1. Okay. And uh, her potassium value was 4.7. Hmm. And uh, we started here off on uh, IV insulin also, insulin infusion was started. How do you treat a DK case uh, in a patient who is having uh, this pump failure? Suppose she understood that the pump failure is there. Can she take a subcutaneous insulin? So already she is taking the pump. Pump is what? Pump is a cartridge which contains, uh, which, which has got an electronic motor that pumps the insulin yes. depending on the blood sugar yes. values. If it is not uh, working, you can very well give subcutaneous yes. insulin, IV insulin. Uh, can also be started instead of going to DK. She can she could have started uh, IV insulin or what? Uh, sorry, subcutaneous Subcutane insulin uh, can be done at home itself. But she might not have noticed it, and now she has presented with DK. What is the basic difference between DK and HHS? In DK, the uh, uh, blood sugars are 
uh, usually seen within uh, less than of 800 range whereas in hhs it will be more than 800 and so ma- mild elevation of sugars are seen in dk the huge elevation of sugars are seen, seen in hhs that is the first thing. first thing second thing then uh, the anion gap uh, the high anion gap will be seen in metabolic acidosis is a feature of dk, DK. that may not be there in, in hhs LHHS. third one then uh, fluid deficiency fluid is deficiency more in, in uh, hhs, HHS whereas whereas it is uh, in comparatively it is less in uh, DK. this dk okay and uh, insulin deficiency is absolute insulin deficiency is more in dk whereas, and uh, relative deficiency is in, in hhs. hhs infections are more common in uh hhs hhs, HHS and uh, that is Less. that can be there in dk DKs. so these are the basic differences but you have a patient who is having uh, hyperglycemia with acidosis what are the differential diagnosis for that now since we have a ketone body testing in blood in our hospital we know that it is diabetic ketosis suppose you do not have ketone body testing in your hospital so what are the differential diagnosis dehydration for acidosis acidosis what are the reasons for acidosis in a patient with hyperglycemia one is dk second hhs hhs HS, no acidosis uh, uh. lactic acidosis, lactic acidosis. infection induced lactic, lactic acidosis renal failure mm. liver failure okay these are the common cause. but most important cause other than dk is lactic acidosis any patient who is having infection dehydration can also have lactate, lactate elevation that produces acidosis sometimes ketone bodies can be produced due to in hhs also you can get sometimes ketone bodies what is the reason for that uh, lipolysis hhs normally it will not produce ketone bodies because insulin is still there mm. but even in that patients sometimes you can see ketone bodies positive that may not lead to acidosis but ketone bodies may be positive what is the reason non recognition of insulin receptor. severe vomiting pregnancy hmm. or uh, patient is not taken any starvation for many days it's all common in elderly individual and elderly individual is not taking water not taking food and not taking insulin so they can lose large amount of volume from the body through urine so they develop hhs some of these patients can have ketone bodies positive but they never go to keto acidosis okay so acidosis is a important feature of dk that is not there in hhs ketone bodies can still be there in hhs okay so here you have uh, acidosis ketoacidosis because absolute insulin deficiency produced by this insulin, insulin pump, pump failure. failure so how do you manage this case in emergency room she is conscious conscious oriented sir. oriented mm-hmm. so no need to worry about that then is she dehydrated only dehydrated okay was, so first was, thing yeah. is first priority is to correct the dehydration, dehydration. how do you de- correct the dehydration so initially you have to give a fluid uh, 15 to 20 ml per kg iv fluid within mm. one hour mm. so uh, it will be like uh, 1.5 to 1.5 liter mm. in the first initial one hour okay. followed by we can give up to uh, one liter in the next hour and uh, then uh, titrate according to the fluid deficiency Okay. okay so you give nearly 3 uh, to 4 liters in first 1 or 2 hours mm-hmm. then over 24 hours you may have to correct av- around 6 liters mm-hmm. so many of these patients can have renal failure uh, edema peripheral edema cardiac failure all these things can you give fluids in that patient uh, you have to give fluids but uh, uh, it have to according so still you have to give fluids because if you are diagnosing dk that means he should have dehydration why dehydration uh, because of uh, hyperglycemia, hyperglycemia large amount of urine will be lost through the kidney but if there is a renal failure that chances are limited but even then if there is intravascular volume depletion how do you detect that uh, i can uh, look for urine output and also intravascular volume depletion in emergency room how do you detect ivc ivc collapsibility you can check and you can see whether ivc is completely collapsible or uh, completely full uh, if it is full then it will be very difficult to give fluids but if it is collapsible even there is peripheral edema you can give fluids second thing is passive leg raising test what is that so while raising leg we can uh, look for how the the uh, the yeah, blood when you raise the leg you can see the bp is increasing if the bp is increasing that means he can uh, give he can be given some more, more fluids. fluids 
that is uh, second thing third thing is uh, you don't have anything you don't know all these things give fluids and watch the patient the patient going to uh, minimal permanent edema stop the fluid so these are the only three possibilities can be done in a patient who is in already fluid overloaded but intravascular volume may be limited because of patient is losing large amount of volume from the body because of the hyperglycemia okay so anyway fluid has to be given so normal saline can be yeah. given okay but whereas in hhs how do you, what fluid do you give plasmolate hhs what is a fluid already hyperosmolar state so hyperosmolar means sodium will so be more either so. normal or higher uh-huh. in dk it will be always low mm. you have to when the sugars are high it will be falsely mm. low whereas in hhs it will be mm. normal or high higher. in that case you cannot give normal mm-hmm. saline you half give NS. half normal saline so in that case you give half normal saline here you give normal saline and how long you continue this normal saline and half normal saline uh, till uh, her uh, dehydration is stable and also uh, we'll check the uh, values sodium values will be blood sugar blood, blood, blood sugar value should not drop less than 250 250. once it is dropping less than 250 this patient may go to hypoglycemia or some children it can develop they can develop cerebral edema to avoid that we add dextrose saline to the regime so till 250 and all we give uh, half ns ns or ns ns. then you change to dns DNS. okay so that can be given and that should be continued over 24 hours in dka fluid deficit is around 60 liters, liters whereas in 68 liters in hhs um, 8 to 10, 10 liters so that we should remember okay so fluids are given next is what then uh, if the potassium is greater than 5.3 there is no need to correct the potassium here it is 4.4 4. 4. so it's a normal no. potassium no need to worry what will happen to potassium when you are starting insulin uh, the, uh, there will be shift of potassium from uh, uh, extracellular to intracellular space that okay. will cause the decrease in potassium uh, so when you are giving insulin initially it was 4.1 that may drop to 3 or 3.5 but uh, if it is already 3.5 you have to be very careful it can go down patient can develop hypokalemia okay so now it is normal you have to start insulin how do you start insulin insulin infusion can be started with the 0.1 unit per kg that is a initial dose initial 0.1 dose. suppose it is 7 70 kg patient you he may require 7, 7 units unit. initially bolus okay bolus can be given then infusion can be continued Okay. Then we have to uh, titrate according delta. Uh, we use here. We use delta, delta protocol. protocol. Okay. Delta protocol. According to delta protocol, you can titrate or simply you can divide uh, that like blood sugar by hundred. Okay. That will give the infusion. Suppose it is seven hundred by hundred, seven okay. units per hour. Mm-hmm. Next hour, if it is uh, still high or higher than the previous value, what do you do? and double the dose mm-hmm. of insulin. simply double the double the dose now it is 700 we started 7 units per hour after one hour it is still 700 you make it 14 units okay so that can be done okay like that you can continue the insulin infusion if the requirement is very very high suppose it is you are giving 25 units 30 units per hour still it is not con- getting controlled in a chronic diabetes what will you suspect uh, either the pump, pump is... Pumble. We are giving infusion. Yeah. What, you, what you suspect? You suspect insulin resistance, resistance. syndrome. Mm-hmm. Okay, what is insulin resistance syndrome? Uh, where uh, the insulin receptors are... Insulin resistance syndrome means what we are giving you is human insulin. insulin. This patient may be on human insulin for a long time. So, there will be antibodies against mm-hmm. this insulin. So, immediately after injecting, that will be neutralized by the antibodies. To avoid that, in that in such situation, if the sugars are not getting controlled with your regular insulin, very high dose, then you ch- switch to analog insulin. They are artificially generated insulin. Antibodies will not do, neutralize that insulin. So that can be done. Otherwise, normally in routine practice, regular insulin, rapid-acting insulin is the choice of infusion. So that can be continued. How long you continue this? Until uh, the serum ketones are uh, negative and the acidosis and anion gap is in the normal. Okay, As anion gap has to be become like it has to close, uh, acidosis has to come down, come down, ketone bodies has to be negative, negative. and Should patient be. has to take oral, oral pills. Pills. Then only you can switch to subcutaneous insulin. How do you switch? So we have to take a 24 hour uh, total IV insulin uh, dose we have to take. Then you have to uh, total dose and then you have to divide it. Uh, 
total dose suppose it is total dose yesterday's uh, total dose is 100 units uh, you are given as an infusion how do you switch to subcutaneous insulin today morning so uh, we will divide to three doses and so 9 30 30 30 90, 90 approximately dose. so we will give 30 as an initial bolus dose then mm. we will uh, continue insulin infusion for one more hour then uh, we will uh, give the rest as tad dose okay so 30 units should be given in the morning continue insulin infusion another one hour then it you should stop it okay in some patients ketone bodies may be trace will you stop insulin infusion suddenly uh, suddenly it will again can it will rebound right. okay so you should never stop an insulin infusion suddenly when ketone bodies are still trace okay so that should be continued so what is the reason for uh, dk in this patient in pump failure pump failure what are the other reasons for uh, 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 dk in so other patients infection can be a, infection uh, is the most common cause then pancreatitis pancreatitis mi- myocardial infarction stroke okay and vice versa this uh, dk or hhs can produce all these things they can have mi they can have myocardial sorry uh, stroke they can have uh, arterial or venous thrombosis why it is like that uh, hyperosmolar state hyperosmolar state or hyper uh, like uh, because of the dehydration mm-hmm. the viscosity mm-hmm. will increase that can produce uh, all these uh, thrombotic or embolic phenomenon okay so what happened to this patient patients uh, serum ketones on the we continue with the iv fluids and iv insulin with the potassium correction mm. so her serum ketones became uh, 2 plus became 1 plus then trace and became negative we stopped with the iv insulin and started her own uh, uh, subcutaneous doses of insulin okay. and uh, we have already uh, then we'll change back to pump again and uh, what is the magnesium value in this patient magnesium value 2.1 sir 2.1 what is the importance of magnesium in dk Magne- magnesium is not getting corrected then potassium also that is for potassium dk calcium magnesium helps the insulin to enter the cells insulin metabolism magnesium is a major uh, uh, mm-hmm. element so if magnesium is not there then insulin action will come down how the magnesium in, is lost in diabetic patients that lost in urine, urine through urine okay so that if it is there we have to correct it otherwise it, here it is okay so this case is a diabetic ketoacidosis because of the pump failure insulin pump failure patient has got severe dehydration patient has got acidosis ketone bodies are positive there is no sign of any infection okay treatment is iv fluids and iv fluids so everyone should know that most important treatment in hyperglycemic state is correction of dehydration not insulin if you are correcting dehydration will the insulin uh, sorry sugar levels will drop yeah because uh, dehydration when iv fluids are given sugar levels will drop so when the when you are correcting the hydration part itself you can see that blood sugars are dropping okay what is the uh, target drop of uh, blood sugars in dk so Uh, target drop means every hour you need this 70. much drop 75 to 100 more than that if you are seeing what is, what is your reaction what what problem it can produce hypoglycemia sudden drop in blood sugar can affect which cells sudden rise or sudden drop brain. in blood sugar, brain cells like sodium mm. okay when the sugars are very high you develop coma when it uh, drastically drops the, then again it will produce a problem like sodium okay so suddenly you should not drop the blood sugar so no need to uh, start insulin in a hurry you take your own time and slowly start insulin infusion because the target of uh, treatment is not the blood sugar it is the dehydration correction of potassium third one is only sugars okay what is hva1 seen in this patient 11.6 so what you understood from that sir uh, sugars were also not controlled this poorly controlled okay blood sugars in last 3 uh, months especially in last 1 month it is totally not poorly controlled really so that has to be corrected the pump failure is not only acute it is a chronic pump failure so that you should understand is there any uh, retinal damage for this patient uh-huh. we have sent for the evaluation sir ecg ecg in normal sinus flow ecg what ecg change can occur in dk mi can myocardial infarction is the most common problem which occurs in patients who is having dk especially in elderly individual not young individual okay 
patient has got any other problem other no than other this? comorbidities sir. okay female patient female patient you want to ask the gynecologist to see the patient yes sir any uh, other uh, ovarian fungal infection is very very common vaginal fungal infection is very very common because these patients blood sugars are always high they are prone for uh, candidiasis that candidiasis itself can increase the sugar chronic fungal infection okay so that has to be taken care okay thank you okay.